Welcome to this week's highlights of uh, news and polls from Ipsos Mori. And as the Prime Minister announces that he's tested positive for the coronavirus, we found that the majority of people globally want their borders closed. In Britain, that figure has risen markedly and is now at 76% over the last week. And globally, 83% of people in Italy want uh, to see their borders closed. So it's rising all over the planet. Uh, trade is shutting down. Travel is shutting down. Uh, we've been seeing massive rises in concern about personal health in both America, Britain and Germany. Um, although, interestingly, actually, the countries that are most worried about the health impact are China, India and Vietnam. And there around three quarters of people are expecting to be personally affected. Um, in some ways, uh, people in Britain are more worried about the impact on the economy than they are on their own personal health. And we'll see if that changes. Um, as the disease progresses, because we're clearly several weeks away from the peak. Uh, what has happened, though, in the United Kingdom, but also across the world, is a very significant rise in the proportion of people who think that it poses a threat to their job or their business. And that's now the majority of the population in Britain, up from around 32 uh, percent just a week ago. So shifting really, really rapidly, still not as high in it as in Italy, where it's 63 percent. Uh, or indeed as high as India or China, uh, but certainly uh, changing very, very rapidly. Um, and what we have also seen, of course, with mass job losses is a, a very significant rise in pessimism about the economy. We've now only got one person in seven who believes the economy will improve in the next year, and seven out of 10 of us think it will get worse. And uh, I think they're probably right, unfortunately. Um, and that's up 42% since February. So it's um, you know, really a really marked shift. And I think one of the things for those of us who've been in business for a long time, the dramatic shift uh, that we're seeing in the economy at the moment, it feels like 2008, but happening at high speed. In contrast, when you went back, and look, I looked back at some figures from 2008-9, and that was a sort of much more long, you know, longer term effect, whereas this is just incredibly rapid. Overall, half the population currently say that uh, Boris Johnson is handling the crisis well. Uh, and he's, you know, he's and, and indeed similar proportion will say that the government is. Uh, Chris Whitty, the chief medical officer, does best. But of course, um, doctors are always the most trusted people in Britain and politicians usually not. But what we have seen is a very significant rise in satisfaction with the government. It's shot up uh, over the last um, week or two. And it's now at the sort of level that we would normally see uh, in a crisis, perhaps like the Falklands War, which is where um, the ratings currently are for the government. So, you know, when things are tough, people look to leadership, they look to authority to put things right. And um, that's what we're seeing both in Britain, but also for Emmanuel Macron in France. We're seeing it in Italy for, for Mr. Conte. Uh, and indeed, even Donald Trump uh, is seeing a, a lift off in his ratings at the moment. Boris Johnson's personal ratings have also improved up um, to, to now 52 percent of people satisfied with his performance. So that's pretty impressive. At the same time, uh, we've got 42 percent who say the government's taken the right measures, but as many as half saying that what the government has done has not gone far enough. Now, this was taken, this particular question was taken before we went into lockdown. So it will be we will keep updating this and next week, perhaps, We'll see if people now feel uh, it's, it's done enough. And of course, Britain was relatively late to go into uh, some, you know, sort of lockdown, shutting pubs, restaurants and shops. So it'll be interesting to see how opinion changes. Um, people generally are positive about what the government's done. 65 percent said the budget would be helpful in tackling the coronavirus crisis. And that's before the hundreds of billions of extra spending in terms of wage support and and now, of course, recently support for the self-employed that the government has announced, which are going to have a massive impact on um, Britain's uh, national debt. Uh, and so we think that there will be positive support for that. We know the government, the public want the government to do something to ease the burdens that they face and the massive insecurity that now affects millions. Um, we, are, we are also just been tracking how Britain is adapting to uh, lockdown and the closure of schools, of course. And what they're doing is finding work and childcare much more difficult. 85% uh, of us say it's hard to find what we need in the shops. Six out of 10 of us say it's hard to stay positive about the future. 
39% uh, saying it's difficult to look after their kids and a third, just over a third, 37% saying it's hard to be able to afford their usual expenses. On all of these things, and particularly managing economically and looking after kids, it is the young, uh, the under 34s, who are most likely to say that they're finding things difficult. And of course, if you're looking at disposable income, the trend of the last few years has been that, of course, pensioners have seen more increases in real terms than have uh, the younger, younger working people. So, uh, you know, you can see that the, the millennials in particular being hard hit by the crisis. And one thing that's really dramatic, of course, this is from my friends at the Resolution Foundation, is this dramatic increase in the proportion of people making claims for universal credit. It's up 518%, 370,000 people in one week. Uh, the normal lift off is, the normal number is around 60,000. And it's interesting to compare when the crash hit in 2008, uh, it was only a 78% rise. This is a 500% rise. So, you know, and of course we can see when you try and look at the access to actually speaking to somebody about it, waiting lists of 100,000 people trying to get answers on a website or a phone line. So, you know, we will see how this unfolds. America is similarly dramatically affected. Uh, weekly jobless rise is their highest in more than 50 years. I mean, that's probably the starkest chart I've seen in some time. You know, this gentle fall in um, jobless claims and then suddenly millions and millions of people uh, looking for some sort of financial support. And again, you know, what does this mean for the American presidential election? Donald Trump was desperate to see that things were getting better. Being able, He's still saying that they're all going to be back at work fairly soon. Um, well, we'll see uh, how this plays out um, because the virus is unpredictable. Whether there will be a second peak, we don't know. But pandemics or other pandemics certainly generally last over a year. And the, and the vaccine is some time away, certainly not inside 2020. Um, so we've been looking at people who are um, suffering from underlying conditions and how they feel about being locked down, being told to self-isolate for a long time. Um, and indeed, you know, they have their fears and frustrations. And if you're, if you're interested in that, do have a look at our website, uh, click on that and just explore some of that. There are millions of people now who are literally scared for their lives to go out. We've also looked, of course, at what it means um, for consumers um, and for brands. Do we see a return uh, and a sort of moment of opportunity for trusted brands and also brands that act responsibly uh, and show clear clear purpose during this period. Um, again, there's a, there's a document you can download if you're interested in that, I'll click on the link here. Um, we've also been looking at our global trends survey and the virus and what, you know, what it can tell us about how people might react. Because although the survey was taken, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge survey uh, of over um, 22,000 people in 33 countries and hundreds and hundreds of questions, what the survey, you know, what are, we, we actually mentioned, of course, when we wrote the report, the final report in February, how the virus could impact things, because it's one of those macro forces that are things that are known knowns that drive trends in human society and, of course, manifest themselves in signals of, of, in terms of behavior um, and things that we can notice all around us. There's a massive sort of, you know, load of those happening. So for those of you who are familiar with global trends, we look at uh, you know, some of the emerging trends that we can see, like climate antagonism, which is that climate emergency is one of the values that the world sh you know, uh, shares and indeed is, is almost the, you know, the one thing that unites the planet prior to the coronavirus erupting. But what was interesting is to see how this plays out and the impact of the coronavirus on that. Uh, so pollution levels are now falling in major cities across the West and, and in China. Um, as the New York Times put it here, social distancing, you might be fighting climate change too. Uh, will we see uh, as a result of uh, the diminution in pollution, perhaps even a sort of slight slowdown um, in carbon in 2020, does that make people change their attitudes about climate change and wanting a total reset when we come out of uh, cocooning and come out of self-isolation uh, in, in 2021? Do we, we can see that one of the things that went viral early on in the coronavirus crisis was, uh, you know, Gen Z people born after 1995 blaming boomers for both for the pandemic, which they now care about, but of course blaming them for having ignored climate change during their lives. So 
we'll see, you know, we can see signals that something might change. We don't know if they will, but certainly, uh, you know, this is uh, this is interesting. Similarly, another of the trends that we saw in global trends, if you haven't looked at it, is authenticity is king. And here with the trend of brand worship, you can see people like General Mills spending massive increases in marketing because they believe that consumers in a time of crisis will revert to brands that they know and love and often grew up with. And this is sort of a moment of, you know, people going to the safety in a sense into brands that they know well. It's also a chance of brands to demonstrate their purpose. So, um, you know, Brewdog is a British uh, brewery making a uh, punk IPA beer. And they're now make, they've now repurposed themselves to make some sanitizer. So it's now brew gel and punk sanitizer. Does this mean, you know, that big safe, safe brands, in a sense, will be the ones that actually come out of the crisis uh, stronger than before? Uh, again, we will see. And of course, the other thing that we've seen uh, is that big government is back. We talked in the report about capitalism's turning point and wealth redistribution. But we're now seeing uh, government spending in a way that we almost haven't seen since World War II in terms of the level of indebtedness that it implies. Uh, the American uh, spending program of trillions, again, you know, is phenomenal. Does that mean that actually we start to expect um, a, high, you know, a much higher level of government spend and, of course, potentially uh, taxes to pay for it in the future in the West? Does it mean that Americans will actually demand fundamental changes to their healthcare system? Uh, if what we uh, unfortunately think might happen uh, starts to happen uh, in terms of their healthcare system. So that's another trend that we might see developing. So all of those are in the report. Um, you can follow the pandemic and certainly public opinion about it on our website. Uh, we've, we've collated everything together in one place so you can keep up to date. There are free to air and also de in detail reports if you want them. We've also, um, we, don't, we also haven't stopped thinking about other things apart from the pandemic. And one of the things that we've looked at is uh, using the BBC's Noughts and Crosses series to look at how race is being represented uh, in Britain, in our pillars of popular culture. Uh, that's all for now, folks. Um, but do get in touch. If there's anything you particularly want to hear about at this time, let us know. And we will keep updating you every week from now on. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.